Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to, pre- to welcome a very, very successful entrepreneur, a fellow IPO member from Bulgaria, Mr. Christo Popov. Christo, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Thank you. Christo is the founder and CEO of Fast Track which is one of the fastest growing consulting companies in the world. Uh, he was earlier with Shell and SAB Miller. Uh, interestingly, he has spent one year in India to study Vedanta, Buddhism and Zen. He's had numerous publications uh, to his credit. And as I just mentioned, he's a fellow member of the YPO. So Christo, let's start talking about uh, Fast Track. Tell me about this venture. Yeah. Well, Fast Track is a comparatively young company. Uh, it's only seven years old, uh, and the success and growth of Fast Track actually is, is, if I have to be honest, beyond my expectations. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we operate in over twenty-five different countries. Wow! Uh, but if I if I have to go back, uh, it's a child that has a number of fathers, uh, and I've been trying to conceptualize in my mind what led uh, to the Fast Track methodology, mm-hmm. uh, and there are five or six contribution to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the first is is my life under communism. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, uh, I mean, I come from a communist country, sure. completely different social and economic system. Uh, and there were some interesting lessons about human behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of it, I spent some time in the army in Bulgaria and, and in Russia. That was also a fascinating experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I had the privilege to go to some of the best universities in the world. I mean, I, I had the privilege to interact with uh, people like Mark, Michael Porter, uh, mm-hmm. Peter Sengi. Uh, and then like most of us do, we joined the big corporate world. Uh, I was the head of scenario planning in Shell. Mm-hmm. I spent some time with McKinsey, with Sub Miller. Uh, I was fed up with the corporate world. Uh, I left the corporate world. Uh, and then we, we had a number of startups, over 25 different companies. Wow. Uh, some of them were spectacular failures. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have been through two bankruptcies. Uh, some of them are decent success stories. Uh, and then, like you said, I, I spent one year in, uh, uh, in India. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I was trying to understand uh, Vedanta and Bhagavad Gita and mm-hmm. Zen and, and Buddhi- Buddhism. Uh, and all, all this put together uh, is actually what gave birth uh, to Fast Track. Wow. Uh, so uh, when, I was, when I was analyzing this, uh, I came to some interesting conclusions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe the first one is time is by far mm-hmm. the most important asset of a human being. Mm-hmm. It is true for us as individuals, and it is true for corporations. Mm. Uh, and at the same time, I was fascinated how we tend to make everything much more complex than it actually is. Mm. You go to a traditional consulting company, they will deliver 200 slides. When you see the slides, you say, God, what right. the hell is going on? Mm. Uh, so it actually, if you zoom out, the fundamentals are much, much, much simpler. Uh, and when we analyzed all this, we, we realized that to create a strong business, you need to master two things. Mm -hmm. The first one is to create energy. And the second one is to build character. And Mm -hmm. these were the two fundamental blocks of building a business. Mm -hmm. Um, So we thought, how can we put this together and create a system to help companies to grow faster? Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is this is how uh, this idea of fast track uh, came okay. about. Okay, and uh, Christo, which are the areas that you consult in? We are industry agnostic. Mm-hmm. We are company size agnostic. Okay, uh, and we are geography agnostic. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are ambition sensitive. Mm-hmm. We are not targeting companies. We are targeting CEOs. Wow, and we are okay. targeting a very very small group of CEOs who are mm-hmm. absolutely committed. Mm-hmm. To fulfill the maximum of their personal potential. Amazing. Uh, so this is this is this is what we do, and 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 our analysis showed that there are three activities mm-hmm. that guys like this should master. Mm. Uh, the first one is energy, mm-hmm. uh, the ability to create personal and mental energy. Right. Uh, uh, because if you don't have energy, you have nothing. Mm. Uh, the second one is the ability to act. But actually, acting has two separate elements. Mm. The first one is to have the intellect to decide what is the right action to take. Mm -hmm. And the second one is to do it in the best possible way. Okay. Uh, And the third element is actually learning. Mm. Uh, And what I find fascinating, uh, Ashutosh, is 
when I say learning to people, mm. uh, most of the time uh, they think about professors and schools and, and podcasts. And actually what we ignore is that there are two different types of learning. Okay. Uh, one is external learning, mm. like we said from lectures and all this, but there is another, another source of learning. And when we are born, we are all born with a, with a coach mm -hmm. sitting on our shoulder. Yeah. And this coach never leaves us. Mm -hmm. This coach is with us for the rest of our lives until, mm -hmm. until we die. Uh, and this coach is always right. Mm -hmm. Whatever this coach tells you, he's absolutely spot on. The mm -hmm. only problem with this coach, he only speaks to you when you act. Mm -hmm. And this coach is real life. So there are two sources of learning. One is, yes, go to universities, listen to postcast professors. Mm -hmm. But the other one is stop, get on the balcony and observe yourself like a bug and ask a simple question. Mm -hmm. What did life teach me? And I can promise you there is very, very profound learning in this. I know. I mean, from your comments, I can almost hear the deep learning and understanding you have over the Bhagavad Gita, you know, which is amazing. But... Uh, you know, you said this is a young business and it is one of the fastest growing companies in the world. Krishna, what have been some of your challenges and your learnings as you've built Fast Track? It's interesting. I mean, five, Fast Track is built around five principles. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is 80 20. 20% mm -hmm. of everything we do determine 80% of the outcome. Okay. We call it the ultimate efficiency hack. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in my experience, companies are getting slow, not because they are doing things slowly. Mm. It's because they are not doing the right thing. So the first principle is 80-20. The second one is simplicity. Simplicity is the ability to take out everything that is not necessary, mm. to go down to the fundamentals. And I will challenge you, you master 80-20 and simplicity. Mm. You can't help but have a better, a better business. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. The first principle is something that is maybe a little bit more intellectually challenging. It, it's mm -hmm. called uh, thinking from the first principle. Okay. But going back to your question, the challenges, they mm -hmm. come from principle number four and number mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. Principle number four is brutal honesty. Okay. Brutal honesty is the ability to speak your mind mm -hmm. without the worry how the other person will respond. Mm -hmm. The ability to speak your mind without trying to be politically correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we, we work with companies in India and in, in Vietnam and in Bangladesh and in, in, in Saudi Arabia. And what I have discovered is lack of brutal honesty, mm -hmm. the biggest drain of human capital. That's it. Mm. Uh, and you're asking me, what is the challenge? This is one of the biggest challenges. Yes, of course, we have our teething problem, building sure. a team, building the software, mm -hmm. building the, problem, uh, the product, but that's for every business. Yeah. What I find extremely interesting is when we work with companies, how difficult it is to implement mm. new concepts and change. Mm. And because we work with CEOs who are 99% are extremely smart people, they get the concept. Mm. Intellectually, they grasp it. But when it goes down to implementation, they face the burden of legacy thinking. They, have, they face the burden of local cultures. Mm. So actually changing this is by far the biggest challenge that we're facing. Incredible, incredible. So, you know, when I was reading about you and you know, visiting, uh, reading about all the things that you uh, have on the internet, uh, I've picked up a few interesting lessons that you speak about. The first one is if you risk nothing, you risk more. Uh, you can see only the whole value valley from the edge of the cliff. Help me understand each of these, and there are five of them, six, uh, five of them. Uh, help me understand these with uh, some examples. It's a mind game. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a risk? A risk is a decision with an uncertain outcome. Mm -hmm. any, any decision is mm -hmm. something about the future. Anything mm -hmm. about the future is with an uncertain outcome. Mm -hmm. And why I think risking not taking risk is, 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 is the biggest risk you can take. I mean, the world is such an absolutely fascinating place. Mm. Uh, and if you always live within your comfort zone, mm. you're cutting out 99.99999% 99 .99 of what the world can offer to you. Correct. And I think this is the, 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 maybe the most severe sentence we can mm. put on ourselves mm. to operate with our own uh, feel of comfort. 
Mm. Uh, that's why we believe taking risk is, is basically making making life richer. Well said, well said. And you know, you just spoke about the brutal honesty in a leader or in an organization, but you also say the biggest asset for a leader is self confidence, intellectual humility, and ability to listen, learn, and change. Um, would love to get your perspective on this. For me, self confidence mm -hmm. is the confidence to know that you can change. Mm -hmm. That's self confidence. Uh, and for me, the most beautiful world, word in the world is the word yet. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know this yet. Wow. Okay. And one of the biggest signs of this humility is asking questions. Mm -hmm. Actually, questions are more powerful than answers. Correct. People make progress because of the questions they ask, not because of the answers they find. Uh, oh. Answers only follow, follow questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is self-confidence? Uh, uh, Self-confidence is the ability to change. The ability to change mm. comes from mm. absorbing opinions that are different to yours. Mm. Uh, and as you told, we have the. If I have a fight with you, an intellectual fight, mm. and if I agree mm. with your opinion, people will say as you told, one the mm. discussion. Mm. We think it's the other way around. The person who changes his mind leaves the discussion a better person. Very well. Leaves the discussion a better, better person. So we are constantly striving to, for, for this brutal honesty. And if you go to business schools, they teach people how to give feedback. Mm. Actually, we teach people how to receive feedback. Mm. Uh, and we think any feedback is a sign of respect. Mm. I'm not saying to you, listen, this is bad. I'm saying, I believe you can do better. Mm. And we try to strip the format from the content. It doesn't matter how you talk to me. Mm. I'm desperately trying to search for something in what you say that can make me a better person, a better father, better leader, whatever. Mm. Uh, and this is extremely difficult. Very well This said. is extremely difficult. Mm. Let, me, let me give an example. Yeah. India, mm. big company, run by two brothers, mm -hmm. billion dollar company. Mm. One brother is suggesting a marketing campaign. And... For any person who can analyze it properly, the marketing campaign is horrible. Mm -hmm. But he's the boss. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody stays quiet. The presentation is over. Everybody says, yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. And after the meeting, I go to the younger brother and say, what do you think? Mm -hmm. He says, ah, oh, we're going to lose millions. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you tell him? I can't. He's my senior brother. Mm -hmm. Now, what is happening here? The guy has an idea. He has 10 amazingly smart people in the room, Correct. but they wouldn't speak up. Yes. Why? Because it's culturally mm. not accepted. <laughs> yes. What is happening in this room? He's not tapping the intellectual potential of these people. Mm. So we have challenged ourselves. Can we create a system mm. that actually breaks this barrier? Mm. Everybody can speak his mind to everybody else. Mm. And when I talk to you, I would like to give you the respect and the confidence that you can take whatever you need, Correct. and the rest you can take. Well, well, this is the principle of brutal honesty. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And, and you know, what you're saying culturally is so true, not just in India, but in large parts of Asia, where, uh, and I often say, people down the line don't have the courage or the ability to say no. You know, I think that's the main important factor. But thank you. So, and you know... Also, you're, asking, you're asking for challenges. Uh, we fail... 90% of the time, especially in your part of the world, mm -hmm. to implement this. But mm -hmm. the few companies where you have, we have succeeded, communication goes like that, quality of decisions goes like that, number of mistakes go down. Mm -hmm. because one of the ways to prevent the leader from making mistakes is to give him open. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely critical. Very interesting. So moving on... Uh... You also say that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. Um, are you talking of internal resilience or something else? We only grow when we experience difficult period. Mm -hmm. When you're in your comfort zone, you don't grow. Mm -hmm. If you go to the gym and always do the same thing, you, you, you don't grow. 
Mm. Uh, if you always read the same book, you, you, you don't grow, grow mentally. Mm. So when you experience challenges is the moment of truth. Uh, and, and that's why we say, if you have a fast success, it builds your ego. Mm. If you have a slow success, it builds your character. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, and I believe putting people through difficulties is extremely rewarding mm. for the ones who want to grow uh, mm. as people. So this is this is the fundamental of, uh, of this thought. Very amazing. And my last point uh, from your learning before I move to some more questions is you also say it's a mind's game. Um, help me understand this. It's 100% mind's game. Mm-hmm. It's 100% mind's game. Think about it. Every second, our brain is attacked by one million bits of information. Mm-hmm. One million. And you can only absorb 40,000. Mm-hmm. It's less than 1%. So everything else is a blind spot. It is your decision mm-hmm. which parts of the environment mm-hmm. to consider and what to make out of it. Mm-hmm. There is no reality. Everybody, and you know the famous saying, everybody was accusing Steve Jobs of distorting reality. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, he showed that his reality is the right one. Mm. And all his critics' reality is the wrong one. So it is absolutely a mind's game. And I think the ability to open your mind and to connect mm. as many dots as possible mm. is, is fascinating. And, and, and one, one thing is, is reading books. I'm absolutely fascinated by people who don't read. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, if, you know, you have written books, to write a good book takes you two years. Mm-hmm. A lot of editing, a lot of research, a lot of talking to people. And you give me this piece of knowledge in my hand. Correct. And I can read your book for four hours. Mm. Just imagine for four hours, I'm tapping into the condensed knowledge that somebody has put for two years and Correct. maybe for the rest of your life. Mm. Four hours, I can see the world from through the eyes of Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo, Steve Jobs. Mm. So accumulating all these different points of view makes your perception bigger. So it, it, it puts more dots in your mind that you can connect. Mm. That's why we say it's a mind's game. Very interesting. So let me uh, go back to something you mentioned in right in the beginning about you coming from uh, a communist uh, environment and you're having served in the army. How has the army and the environment you grew up in help you formulate such incredible thoughts about business? It's not it's accumulation of experiences, I think. It's not, it's not the army. Mm. Uh, but the army just, I think, it helps you to understand the second mm. uh, order of consequences. Mm. Uh, uh, that what you do in the moment is irrelevant. Uh, why you do it and what happens in the long run is, is critical. And you can find benefits in every situation you are in. Mm. Mm. Uh, it, you can build physics, you can build character, you can build knowledge, uh, you can accumulate patience. An army is a beautiful place to yep. build your character. Mm. Uh, and if you can distinct, if you, if you zoom out from the day-to-day activities that are mm. physically extremely demanding, mm. you can really understand a lot about yourself. Mm. You know, when you're in love, you are the person he would like to be. Mm. When you're in war, you see the person actually who you are. Okay. So that's why we, we think when you put yourself in such difficult situation, mm. then you can have a better understanding of the self. Fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, so one more question related to fast just, track. Just to put, it, put, it, put it in context. One of mm. the techniques I use here in our company, I deliberately try to take people out of their comfort zone. Mm. And I very carefully observe their reactions. And there are different ways you can take people. Mm-hmm. It could be intellectually, it could be even uh, uh, challenge their values, it could be physically. And observing the reactions of people when they're out of their comfort zone mm-hmm. tells you a lot about the person. Wow. And we try to implement this also in the companies we work. That's why our slogan is, I'm not here to be nice to you. Mm-hmm. I'm here to make you better. So one more question relating to fast track, and then I'll I have a couple of questions on your time in India. Uh, Christopher, for someone who's leading such an amazing organization, for someone who's hired over 10,000 people over the years, for someone who, as you just said, likes to uh, put people, uh, have seat people out of their comfort zone, what would you say is Christo's leadership style? 
I cannot comment on my leadership style. I mean, if you ask my my the people who work with me, they will say it's extremely extreme that I'm extremely difficult person to work with. Okay. Uh, but I, over the years, I have learned to believe that it's almost impossible to 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 change people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and character is maybe the most important thing. Uh, and you know the vasanas. We, we, uh, I'm 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 very. I'm putting a lot of efforts trying to understand the strengths of people and their natural inclinations mm-hmm. and just try to create the right environment uh, for them to operate. Mm-hmm. Uh, we managers uh, have the wrong belief that it is our job to motivate people. Mm-hmm. It isn't. Our job is to find people who are already motivated mm-hmm. and create the best environment for these people to flourish. So basically our job is to pick up the right character and create the environment. That's it. What a fascinating uh-huh. perspective. Very, very interesting. You know, pick up motivated people rather than try and find ways who, to motivate people. Fantastic. So, Christo, I have time for a couple of more questions. And I thought I'm going to, since I am in India, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about India. You spent one year in India to study the to Vedanta Buddhism in Zen. A uh, couple of questions. What motivated you to come to India? Uh, it's a combination of a couple of, thing, couple mm-hmm. of things, actually, Josh. I was uh, at a crossroad in my life. Uh, uh, I was a bit disillusioned mm-hmm. uh, with big corporations. Uh, not disillusioned. I reached a stage where I became uh, a very senior person at a very young uh, age. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I found this extremely dangerous mm-hmm. uh, because you start taking yourself too seriously. Correct. Uh, and I was also worried what's happening outside me. I, I couldn't figure it out. Mm. Uh, we are the most comfortable generation ever Correct. in the history of the planet. And we are the most complaining mm. generation ever. Mm. You talk to these young guys, they have everything. And if their Instagram doesn't load for three seconds, they start complaining. Yep. Uh, yep. And, and two weeks down the, down the, the road, they, they, they're mentally depressed. So I was trying to put all these two things together and, and, and try to make sense of it. Uh, and I came across an Indian teacher called Swami Parthasati. Mm-hmm. Uh, who shared with me some of the fundamentals of Vedanta. And I loved it. I mean, he said Vedanta is, is unlike other re- religions. There is no dogmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's teaching us that intellect is the guiding factor. Mm-hmm. So don't trust what I say. Use your intellect to assess what I say. And I loved it. And okay. I just wanted to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And if something has survived for 5,000 mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. and had impacted the lives of billions of people, there should be merit in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all this prompted me to go and, and dive deep into, into this. And I, I really, really loved it. And I'm fascinated, actually. I mean, you go to India, uh, you see extremely poor people. Yeah. Uh, but if you look into their eyes, somehow mm-hmm. you see peace. You see Shanti. And you go to some other countries, you see rich people. And in their eyes, you see hatred. Mm-hmm. I was just keen to understand what is behind it. What is it? How fascinating. Is it DNA? How fascinating. You seem to have picked up the pulse of a large Indian population, especially about the peace in people's minds, you know. But my last question to you now is, uh, how are you using your learnings from Vedanta uh, in uh, Fast Track? Uh, Fast Track is not a job for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fast Track is not a company. Fast Track is who we are. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, I'm trying to apply my personal values in, in what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, our person, my personal definition of success, my personal definition of, of, of how to spend your days, how to take decisions, mm-hmm. uh, uh, how to how to spend your life. Uh, so Vedanta had a huge uh, impact uh, mm-hmm. in what we do. Uh, and if you come here to the office, it has an impact on everybody around us. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people don't like it. Mm. Uh, some people like it, uh, but it is what it is. Mm. Uh, and uh, a lot of people believe success is what you have achieved, but this is a static mm. Mm. Uh, definition of success. Uh, we prefer to have a more dynamic understanding of success. Mm. Uh, and for me, it all boils down to do you enjoy what you do every second of the day? Mm. Uh, uh, if you call Nine, the time nine to five a job, you're not a happy person. Correct. Uh, so we are trying to go to love Mondays as much as we love 
Fridays. Fridays, yes. We have a more dynamic uh, uh, definition of success. And at the end of it is, you, I think we need to have crystal clarity of where you want to go. Mm. You cannot dis have this clarity if you don't know yourself. So at the end of the day, it's about authenticity. Mm. Uh, and That's it takes it. a lot of time to distill this, to observe yourself and, and to find the, the, your true self. And then it takes a lot of courage not to give in to social pressure to change. Amazing. Amazing. Christo, on that note, uh, thank you so much. It's been such a privilege speaking to you. Thank you for talking to me about Fast Track, about the amazing things that you're doing. Thank you for speaking to me about your learnings, about your philosophies. And thank you for uh, speaking to me about your incredible experience that you said you had in India and how it's really relating back to you and uh, all the people around you. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. It was a privilege. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.